Good day. My name is Dan Moyane, and I'm the strategic marketing consultant of Momenta Metropolitan. But they also call me the media elder. Now, it's my pleasure to introduce all the speakers to you at the 2020 Investment Matters Conference. But first, there's a bit of housekeeping to get out of the way. Now, please remember that each speaker's presentation is hosted separately, so you need to bookmark or join each of the sessions you'd like to watch, as they will not start automatically. Now, slide decks are available on each speaker session and can be downloaded as a PDF. Now, the event platform provides the ability to rate sessions and even for you to ask questions during the presentations. Someone will be there to either answer your questions or will get back to you with an answer at a later stage. On the event feed itself, please like, rate, and comment on photos, videos, and polls. You can also create your own posts. Now, this is very important. You must click on the Leave button after each session to qualify for CPD points. Remember? You must click on the Leave button after each session to qualify for CPD points. Now, this virtual conference platform will be open until the end of November if you still like to view any of the presentations you were not able to see. However, you will only be able to get CPD points for the live sessions you viewed. So live counts for CPD points. After November, all the videos will be available on our website. That's momentum.co.za. For the next segment, you would need to choose between two breakaway sessions being broadcast at the same time. The first breakaway is about Momentum Investments capabilities. These presenters will be introduced by Litsiho Renkin, who is the Executive Head of Institutional Distribution at Momentum Investments. The other breakaway is on the company's solutions and will be introduced by Wayne Dennehy, the Head of Systematic Strategies and Structuring at Momentum Investments. There are four of these breakaway sessions, so please make sure you choose one of each of the four sessions. You are welcome, of course, to watch the one you couldn't watch today at any other time until the end of November. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wayne Dennehy. I'm the head of institutional sales at the Momentum Investment Team and look after all of our institutional clients that are invested in our multi-asset class, multi-managed portfolios. It is my great pleasure to introduce the Solutions Breakaway to you this morning. Our first topic in this stream this morning is how COVID-19 has changed the retirement solution for the future. We all agree that 2020 has been a truly unique event, and let's hope at least a once in a lifetime, or at least once in my lifetime event. Our speakers on this topic this morning are Eugene Boerter, our Deputy Chief Investment Officer at Momentum Investments, and James Klemster, a Director of Investment Management at Momentum Global Investment Management based in London. Eugene will be looking at how investors behave, how this affects portfolio construction thinking. He'll be sharing with us some of his thoughts around how this links back to ESG. And James will be there to give us a global perspective on this topic. Eugene, James, over to you. And good day, everybody. So as Wayne mentioned, I would like to spend a bit of time today to talk to you how global risks, structural market changes, and economic events have changed the retirement solution for the future. Now, we have all come across the famous concept and first principle of investing that says we should invest for the long term. The investment market is riddled with uncertainty, but certain tried and true principles can help investors boost their chances for long-term success. So if your time horizon allows it, a focus on the future with an eye towards long-term investment can increase the likelihood of retiring more comfortably. The problem, however, is often that the focus becomes too short-term. Risk is not clearly defined or understood, and we get swayed by our emotions, making it an increasingly difficult task to remain invested or stick to a strategy or plan that is designed for the longer term. As a result, behavioral biases creep in and often irrational decisions are made. We at Momentum Investments have done an enormous amount of research, focusing on understanding the detrimental effect that reaction to short-term risk events, regret, 
the age-old peer relative focus and a focus on historical returns have on investor decision making and consequently also performance. Now this slide shows the impact that short-term irrational decision making and behavioral biases can have on longer-term return outcomes for an investor in different market conditions. It is clear that investors tend to make more irrational decisions during periods of crisis and during peri periods when markets do not deliver on the handsome returns that they perhaps have seen during the past, eroding significant value. So how do we solve for our inherent biases? And what, is it, what does this retirement fund for the future actually look like? The key here is to have a clearly defined objective to deliver on and a firm understanding from all parties, that's the client, the consultant, and the asset manager, what the expectations are in terms of investment horizon, risk management focus, and resultant return objective, or in simple terms, the client goal. Now the goal can simplistically be derived and defined by where a retirement fund member is in his life cycle and journey to retirement. For example, for younger members, the focus is more about accumulation of capital to ultimately increase their purchasing power of a post-retirement income, whereas for members closer to retirement, the focus is more around preserving the purchasing power of the capital that was built up over the years of pension contribution. The choice of the post-retirement income solution also plays an important role in defining what purchasing power means and therefore, it is extremely important that the advice processes are directly interlinked to the investment proposition to ultimately deliver on the client goal in the most effective way. An asset strategy or appropriate retirement solution can then be designed, constructed and managed in a way to deliver on the overall objective. It is therefore important to understand risk in an appropriate and relevant way. The way we deal with risk depends on how it is defined. Risk should be appropriately defined relative to the holistic objective and client goal, as I referred to earlier. Now, risk tolerance is about knowing where the line is drawn between acceptable and unacceptable outcomes. Risk tolerance should ideally reflect an investor's ability to take risk and not the willingness to tolerate risk. If willingness is lower than ability, huge opportunity costs may be incurred. Willingness to take risk is often wrongfully driven by emotions, peer pressure, and herd behavior, and perhaps a misunderstanding of the objectives. Risk should be commensurate to the outcome required. In a similar way that you would not buy life insurance on a building or take out a 30-year term life policy on a 60-year-old person, insurance policies are matched to the nature and time horizon of the risks. The pension fund investment strategy and solution should be considered likewise in all its complexity, else it will result in unexpected outcomes and surprises. A solution designed to optimally deliver on the client goal is therefore paramount. So with a focus on increasing purchasing power of a post-retirement income for younger members in a retirement fund, the investment strategy's ability to, to deliver on real returns that returns in excess of inflation is very important. In an age of inflation, the challenges associated with management of pension funds to deliver significant real returns are considerable. For many years, it meant that retirement funds were limited to investing primarily in government securities, listed equity, and perhaps some additional debt and fixed interest instruments. Changing market conditions and the need to maintain a high enough rate of return have result in pension plan rules that allow investments in most asset classes, including alternative assets and real assets like infrastructure, renewable energy, direct property, private equity, and the likes. These assets are not only beneficial from a diversification and risk management perspective in a realistic, robust multi-asset solution, it also allows exposure to assets that can deliver on yields and returns that are different to the traditional asset classes. This is required to increase the inflation beating ability of the solution. At the same time, these assets also allow retirement fund members to invest in assets that supports sustainability and to have a real meaningful impact on the economy from a socially responsible perspective. 
the ongoing coronavirus crisis has amplified the growing calls for resilient and adaptable infrastructure that effectively can operate during moments of crisis. Given this massive opportunity, it is imperative that we look to embark on infrastructure investment programs that strive to provide infrastructure that is sustainable, technologically advanced and resilient. It is the financially, environmentally and socially responsible thing to do for the world. Responsible investment practices resonate with our outcomes-based investing philosophy and also resonate with the alignment of our clients' long-term goals to positively influence the world they will retire to. A definite requirement for a retirement solution focused on the future. What Latsi will talk to how Momentum Investments is approaching this in a session later today. And Sonia and Mike will also talk to the importance of impact investing. Now, looking at the most important aspects of the retirement fund for the future, it is clear that it is an integrated process of a couple of aspects with a client goal front and center of the solution. As a result, one size does not fit all. Cost effectiveness, sustainability, non-traditional asset classes are all key. Looking at the global component of a client solution, the world is your proverbial oyster. When designing that solution to deliver on the holistic client goal, all of the different assets and components of the investment strategy need to be aligned. With the global component being up to a third of the retirement fund solution, it is not something you can neglect or manage on an arm's length basis. It has to be just another piece of the same puzzle. We believe by following a fully integrated process of co-creation with your global investment provider ensures that the total solution is top-notch and aligned to deliver on the intended client goal. That said, I'll take this opportunity to hand over to James Lemster from Momentum Global Investment Management, and will give you some detail of the collaboration framework into a client solution, as well as some perspective of how the principle of investing with a conscience is incorporated into the global components of a retirement solution. Thank you. Following on from Eugene's presentation, I'd like to give a brief flavor in terms of how our teams spread across South Africa and the United Kingdom operate as a seamless integrated unit to deliver investment outcomes for our clients. South Africa is, as I'm sure you already know, a relatively small part of the global opportunity set. I've made it a point of principle throughout my career at Momentum to be positive on South Africa because I believe it's a great country full of great people and actually taking a step back from the day-to-day -day noise, it has impressive infrastructure and businesses as well as solid institutions and the rule of law being largely observed. Clearly there are challenges, but I won't make the case for investing globally by being negative about South Africa. Even South Africa's most ardent supporters would have to recognize though that the economy and the stock market are small. South Africa's economy is less than 1% of global GDP today. So for a South African investor to stick at home, it means they're missing out on more than 99% of the world's GDP. Now, clearly we don't invest in GDP, we invest in securities such as equities and bonds, but despite South Africa's punching above its weight compared to its GDP, the stock market still only accounts for about 2% of the MSCI All Countries World Index today. Global markets are therefore large and diverse. Different asset classes provide vastly different return streams from one another, and this means we can craft portfolios with a wide array of outcomes, targets, and risk budgets from the adventurous to the defensive. This is even more prescient when placed into the context of South African investors. Thanks to the differences in index composition, as well as the impacts of currency moves, the local stock market is only modestly correlated with global stocks at about 0.5. Furthermore, global bonds are negatively correlated to local South African equity and have imperfect correlation to local South African bonds. So global markets are a very effective diversification tool. The teams in London and South Africa are aware of the powerful impact global allocations can have on South African portfolios. As the allocation allowable outside of South Africa has increased over the years, it's become ever more important to invest with a team that can co-create solutions to play to the strengths of both the South African market and the rest of the world in one place. And that's exactly what we are able to do. There's no substitute for having a team operating in one of the world's preeminent financial centers, arguably the center of global commerce, and our clients receive a direct benefit from our presence in the beating heart of the city of London. 
The benefits of having a team spread over these diverse geographies is that we can ensure the portfolios we build together complement one another. The UK team are able to take advantage of opportunities that the South African team would like to, but are presently unavailable to them due to the composition and scale of the South African market. Think of the best of both worlds, Bryce in the rain. On the subject of best, I'm delighted to announce that our London team has won yet another award recently. We won Best International Fund Group at the International Investment Awards. Let's look at a real example which gives stark relief on the importance of both working together and having access to global stock markets, sustainable investing. Earlier this year, we launched our first sustainable multi-strategy equity fund. The fund in this example has been years in the making and a large team of individuals from both our South African and our UK offices played their part. An integrated approach to ESG or environmental, social and governance considerations like the ones that are applied in this solution overcomes a lot of the challenges that are otherwise present in sustainable investing. There are a lot of different ways that ESG can be applied in portfolios and in our solution we look to combine the best bits of each of these approaches. Firstly, exclusion. Clearly there are a large number of industries that one might want to exclude outright from a portfolio, such as firearms or tobacco and so on. If the index from which you want to exclude these types of stocks is too small or concentrated, then deleting these stocks from the investable universe can have a very significant impact on the returns profiles, creating skews either within a sector or worse, excluding whole sectors from the portfolio build process. Another way to consider ESG integration is to look to invest portfolios towards those stocks that demonstrate best in class sustainability scores, such as climate strategy or corporate governance in their particular sector. Clearly then the question is how high the bar should be set to determine best in class from the rest. Again, in too small or concentrated a market or sector, the decision could quickly boil down to a binary one, either hold the sector or not. Whereas where the sectors are large with lots of member stocks and good diversification, there's more scope for being selective for best in class credentials without impacting a portfolio unduly, whether that be from a size, style or sector perspective. A third way is looking at reduction of a particular footprint, be that carbon, waste, water, energy and so on. The best way to do this is to rank all the stocks in the universe on these scores and then focus on the companies in each sector that are low in terms of their footprints. Again, having too small a cohort of stocks to choose from renders this impossible. In our sustainable fund, the one we're talking about as an example, which is an enhanced index vehicle, we have the best of all of these worlds. We have some exclusion plus ESG best in class integration plus ensuring the portfolio has a lower footprint. Thanks to the large universe at our disposal, we can do this while ensuring that we do not skew our factor exposures out of alignment. The important thing for us is that a great sustainable investment portfolio has to be, first and foremost, a great portfolio. And only by having a broad enough investable universe is it possible to create a portfolio that combines both these facets. We all know there are a wide variety of passive index strategies available that target more ESG conscious investors today, but they generally lack the level of broad based ESG integration that our strategy can offer not to mention the active exposure we achieve through a built-in alpha engine that has a track record of outperformance over more than a decade. Market breadth is one of the key ingredients that make this possible. However, executing the strategy effectively drew upon all of our strengths across our business, including our depth and our experience of our specialist investment teams, a rock solid operating platform and the scale to be able to deliver this solution at market leading costs. And why are we doing it? Because our investors told us it's important to them that we do it. And that neatly emphasizes how we operate at Momentum Investments, because with us, it's personal.